Welcome to another episode of You've Been Schooled. I'm Armando. I'm Eric. And we're three days out from the NFL draft. And the biggest question, Eric, is who are the Cleveland Browns going to take? We know they have the number one pick, and we know they've been bad for a long time. And it comes down to uh, Miles Garrett out of Texas A&M, an athletic right. pass rusher, or are they going to take a chance with a quarterback? Um, we've seen them in the past kind of miss on quarterbacks. You want to touch on that a little bit, Eric? Yeah, you know, the Browns – Let's let's say here first are trash. Okay, I think we both could agree on that. And you know they they're historically always missing on QBs. Okay, their previous drafted QB Johnny Menziel. You know that's a story in and of itself. You know he, before when they drafted him, before Menziel texted the league, the Browns owner that you know if you take me we're gonna destroy the league we're gonna be champs, and lo and behold they did draft him, <laughs> and we know what happened from there. So. For the, for the Browns to listen to a child coming out of college and actually drafting him with, the, with this promise that they're going to take the championship title, that says a lot about the organization of itself. What do you think? Absolutely. It's just a testament to kind of how dysfunctional that organization is, and clearly that wasn't a good decision. And a lot is hinging on this pick, this draft. Um, but in, in other news, Jabril Peppers uh, failed his, his uh, test. Um, it was a diluted sample. Um, and he's kind of the talk of the draft. But why do you think like, we see so many of these NFL players have issues with drug tests, um, domestic violence, just kind of things that, that just kind of hinder their performance on the field? You know, when you get to the league, you have a lot of access. For example, these young kids, they're seeing money like they've never seen before. They're seeing fame. They're seeing media exposure. They're seeing fans. But... What does this all what does what does this mean for them? You know, they they want to do stuff with all this power, and as my good friend Stephen A. Smith would say, you know, you just gotta stay off the weed, man. Just gotta stay off the weed, and we won't have any problems. So with that being said, you know, let's let's listen to Stephen A. Smith talking about the weed. Weed. You come on that, and then you come on TV, and you come on national TV. Oh, Stephen A., he, he got to look out. Look out for what? Weed? Weed? Really? You can't smoke weed. Period. Weed. Stay off the weed. Who are you, Snoop Dogg in a green room? I mean, what, what the hell is going on? You want to sit there and stay on the weed, and you can't stay off the weed is stay off the weed millions of dollars and you can't stay off the weed so with jabril not being able to stay off the weed <laughs> i think his draft stock's gonna go down possibly be a late second round pick maybe even third round and before he was talked about as possibly a top 10 pick it's just kind of crazy to see how uh, volatile Absolutely. that is but uh, eric who do you think's gonna go number one you know I think the Browns would make a huge mistake if they didn't take Miles Garrett because that boy is a freak of nature. You know, we, we recently saw a clip of him bench pressing a, a guy on ESPN. You know, he, he's just a superhuman, and I feel like the Browns are going to strike gold with him. Absolutely. He is a freak athlete. I can't deny that. Uh, but I'm going to have to disagree with you. I'm going to say the Browns should take a quarterback, whether that's Deshaun Watson or Trubisky, they got to take a quarterback because um, in this league you need a quarterback to win. But we hit the streets of USC and asked students, who do you guys think will go number one in the NFL draft? I think it's going to be Miles Garrett. I think that the Browns are uh, they're not bold enough to go make a mistake. You know, everyone's talking about Miles Garrett being the number one. I think the Cleveland Browns are going to take Miles Garrett as the number one draft pick in the 2017 draft. There's been talk about them wanting to take a quarterback, but I don't, I don't think the quarterbacks are strong enough. I think the Niners will take a quarterback at number two. I think Miles Garrett stays number one. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. There's Shane McCaffrey, because sometimes they go by looks, and he's really cute, so there you go. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey, too. Fight on! Miles Garrett. Yeah, I, I think he's got a good shot. Um, I'm a big Christian McCaffrey fan also, so I think he's got a shot. But yeah, one, one of the two. 
think Miles Garrett out of Texas A&M. Drew Peppers. Draft, um, you know, you you got a ton of guys like you know, you got guys like Miles Garrett, who's just a freak athletically, but also you have the quarterbacks. Um, so, in my opinion, it'll either be Miles Garrett or one of the quarterbacks, just because teams are so in need of a quarterback, and that's such a huge, huge position in the NFL. Um, usually, teams that win Super Bowls they have established quarterbacks. So, um, so with that being said, I think it'll either be. Um, a team that thinks that they have a quarterback and they'll pick Miles Garrett, or a team that might need a trade up to get a quarterback number one overall. And we have a couple Trojans going into the draft. It will be interesting to see where they go. Eric, where do you think Juju and Adoria are going to land? You know, I can confidently say that both Juju and Adoria will be drafted first round. And actually, I want to I want to touch upon Juju. Um, he recently released a letter to the Players Tribune. Tribune where he talked about, you know, the eye for football. You know, there are some things that numbers don't measure, and that's what Juju's kind of calling upon. You know, his, his commitment to the game, if you actually watch his game film, there are a lot of plays that he's, he, he goes on that he's not the target, but he still goes 100%, you know. And that's, that's a player you kind of want on your team, you know, a player that's dedicated to the football program, and if he's not the main guy, he'll still give it his all. How about yourself? Um, yeah, I could see that. Juju definitely puts in the effort. But I think Juju and Adori um, will go. I think Adori will go in the second round. Juju somewhere in the third round. I think the amount of injuries Juju's had in college, he's always just been dealing with that, I think will um, scare away NFL teams a little bit. And then Adori's athleticism will definitely um, help him go in the second round, I think. But we asked USC students as well, where do you think your fellow Trojans will go in the NFL draft? I think they'll probably... I'd say Juju goes two, and Adori goes like late two. I think they'll probably be taken both in the second round. I'd be surprised if they drop further than three. I think Adori Jackson will be taken uh, starting maybe mid second round, and Juju Smith will be taking mid to late third round. Adori end of the first round. Early second probably. Juju, Juju second. third round. Okay. I see him as a third rounder, but yeah, still up there. I think the Brooklyn goes second round. Um, I think Adore is going to go late first round, and Juju's going to go either late first or um, getting in the second. Definitely first round. Definitely second round. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Juju will be first round, and then uh, Adore will be second round. Uh, I'll say second round. Um, I say the first because they're from USC. Five yeah, five on five on five definitely the best. first. Always the best. Yep. <laughs> so we asked USC football players about their thoughts of the impact of the Combine on the NFL Draft. The Combine does matter a lot to coaches because like a Combine is a good way for them to see how fast you are, how like quick you move, how uh, smart you are too. Yeah, I definitely think Combine has uh, too much to do with guys' draft status because I've seen guys who uh, the strengths of their game don't necessarily roll over to the combine like let's say they're slower they don't jump very high um their draft stock ends up dropping as opposed to things that they put on tape and uh, kind of just asking the coaches what type of character they have my personal opinion i think game film is more important just because you know what you're able to do on the field is more important than how fast you're running a 40 or how high you know you're jumping just from standing up so um i think you know, if someone's super explosive, you can see it in the combine, but at the same time, I think game film is definitely more important. Uh, with being the talk of the draft and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it's really exciting and it's, it's nice, honestly, but it also comes with, you know, I have to play well next year, obviously, like, I just can't, you know, I just, I can't do poorly, um, I guess, next year and still be, you know, talked about next year. It just, it goes hand in hand, but at the same time, it's awesome, but you still you still gotta perform. You still gotta um, you still gotta do everything to make yourself the best player that you can be next year, or that I can be next year. And um, you know, I think I'm just gonna prepare that way. And it's awesome to be the talk of the draft or whatever. But you know, until I'm actually draft eligible, or even if I decide to leave next year, which I don't even know yet, like it's just it's all up in the air right now. So with 
the beginning of the NFL season right around the corner being rung in by the NFL draft, we move over to basketball where the NBA playoffs are happening. And, you know, the talk of the town right now while we're in Los Angeles is the Clippers. And we re recently found out that Blake Griffin is out indefinitely because he broke his big toe. What a big cry baby, you know? We seem more serious injuries than that, and Blake Griffin's not returning to the playoffs. What are your thoughts on, you know, his commitment to the program? You know, it's it's so unfortunate, Eric, that Blake goes down again. He went down last year in um, similar fashion, but with a different injury for, for the rest of the playoffs, and it's just so did Chris Paul. And the year before that, they dropped a 3-1 lead to Houston. It's just been heartbreaking for Clippers fans. It feels like there's a curse, but I don't think we can put the blame on Blake Griffin. Um, he comes to work, and he's had some setbacks, but he's one of the best players in the league. And I just, I just hope that it's not his last game in a Clippers jersey because that's what everyone's been saying, and it just it rubs me the wrong way. I don't know. You, I, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think if Los Angeles wants to ring in a championship title under the Clippers title, they have to come to terms with letting Blake Griffin go. Let's, let's go back a few months. You know, when Blake Griffin punched a staff member on the Clippers, team is that someone you want on your team is that someone you want to have playing with you if you is that someone you want to train is that someone you want to take to the finals i don't think so yeah those are all fair questions eric and i mean he he made a mistake and he's apologized for it i think the team stands behind him um it's just a matter of moving forward but i think with steve Ballmer and that 2.1 billion dollars he paid for this team he's going to want to see some winning so some kind of change is going to come this summer um, but I think Blake Griffin should stay a Clipper, and um, I really hope so. But one of the other teams that's dealing with adversity, the uh, Boston Celtics, Eric. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, if you guys haven't, if haven't heard, Isaiah Thomas, the star point guard for the Celtics, lost his sister in a tragic car accident, I think one day before the start of playoffs, and yet he's still persevering. He's still putting up numbers for the Celtics, um, which says a lot about his character, first of all and his commitment to the Boston Celtics program. I mean, this is a this is a man who saw the bench not too many years ago, and now is an all-star. And now, I mean, the year he's having, and the fact that they're in the first seed in the playoffs, and this tragedy happened to them, it's, it's crazy to hear. And, you know, the series is still tied 2-2. Two -two. Absolutely, yeah. He's he's only five foot eight. It's, it's yeah. crazy watching him run around the basketball court with these giants, and he, he excels, one of the league's best scorers, but he has the heart of a lion, and it's great to see him and his teammates um, support him through this tragedy. Absolutely. They started 0-2 against the Bulls, but they were able to win two in Chicago, so they're going to make it a series, and um, we were talking about this, Eric. We think maybe this could push them possibly past Cleveland, maybe get to the finals. I mean, that's that's for sure, and I know we asked, we asked uh, students on the street who their predictions as uh, NBA champions would be this year. Uh, probably the Celtics. I feel like I've heard something about them being really good this year. Well, I'm a Warriors fan, and I have to be on the Warriors side. I think there's no doubt they'll win. I think the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to win the NBA Finals, especially after what happened in Boston, who I thought were the only contenders for the Cavs. So I feel like now they're going to definitely make the Finals. I don't think the Golden State Warriors are up to par. The Lakers, because they're close to my heart. I know they're not very good this year, but I really do love them. Um, I think the Golden State Warriors. So that's a good <laughs> one. Thanks. Uh, Boston Celtics. I'm from Boston, so I'm going to say Boston Celtics. That's hands down, Warriors. <laughs> they've, got, they've got the best team in the league. They're stacked. Like, I don't Kevin see Durant it. just came back today, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, there, there's no way that they, that they could lose. Uh, I think the Spurs are going to win. I think the best team and their best coach. Um, I think the Warriors are going to win. Uh, probably the Warriors. Honestly, I think it's the Cavs and the Warriors. But, you know, I think a team like the Spurs, um, or maybe even the Celtics, you know, who knows with the way they're playing. But, um, you know, I think those could be some dark horses. But obviously right now you look at the Cavs and the Warriors and who would win between those two teams. So, I mean, you've, you've heard it here from your fellow Trojans that the favorite to win the NBA playoffs are the Cleveland Cavaliers. And between the two of us, you know, we can agree that either Cleveland, Golden State, or maybe even Boston will take the title. But one thing's for sure, the Clippers aren't going to get there. And with that being said, you've, watched, you've been watching, you've been schooled. I'm Eric. And I'm Armando. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.